Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Man of Steel was Zack Snyder's underappreciated launch of a deeply thematic and often misunderstood cinematic universe. With Snyder's cut of Justice League coming out next year, we are re-exploring Henry Cavill's Superman arrival for the many visual details, easter eggs, layers of meaning, some not so subtle, others very easy to overlook under the layers of muscle. We open on Krypton, the birth of Kal-El, the first natural Kryptonian birth in centuries. Snyder designed the Kryptonian architecture in the Art Nouveau style, meaning that no design can be as balanced as what nature creates. And Snyder himself acknowledged that the natural forms most reflected are reproductive organs, an ironic expression of Krypton's fertility crisis. And yeah, Kal-El's pod shooting out of the L homestead is life finding a way. <laughs> Yep, that is our first missable detail, brace yourselves. Now the Superman's sigil in these films is the House of L family crest and translates to hope. All Kryptonians wear their family sigils on their chests like this, the idea being that Superman's suit is really just the common Kryptonian undergarment. With Krypton's core becoming unstable, Jor-El begs evacuation. I have held that hope in my hand. <laughs> a clue for his encoding the Kryptonian genetic codec into the cells of his newborn son, the literal heir of hope. jor stands up to Zod. Will sever the degenerative bloodlines that led us to this state. And who will decide which bloodline survives on? You? Russell Crowe's eyeline directs up to Zod's eyes, meaning that when he said the word bloodlines, he was glaring in judgment at Zod's clan chest emblem, then redirecting that judgment to the face. Zod's Sword of Rao crest has a sickle shape like the scythe of death ending in a fine point, a contrast to the winding flowing line of the L crest, which brings life. Like, like a river. Created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, the family name L is a Hebrew word for God, a parallel Snyder does not shy away from. He'll be a god to them. Cal is cast as a Christ figure over and over and over, and Snyder does this really to link Superman to Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, the monomyth, hero with a thousand faces. You'll notice Kryptonian glyphs are everywhere, they're actually on the opening Warner Brothers logo, but appearing on the council chamber, they translate to a Kryptonian poem. But according to Snyder, among these glyphs is also a translated quote from Joseph Campbell. Now you'll notice looming over Krypton is this shattered moon. Snyder recently revealed that this is actually intended as a reference to a past battle with Doomsday. This was before he reintroduced Doomsday as Zod's corpse, right? resurrected in Batman v Superman, Zod's warships approach in the heat of the sun, an homage to the Rite of the Valkyries in Apocalypse Now, a super iconic image that's not actually in that film, but on its poster. Now, Man of Steel as a film has a lot of concepts at play, Christ allegory, reproductive symbolism, Greek philosophy, but at its heart, it was intended by the filmmakers to be an immigrant story. Now, this isn't new to anyone who's read Superman comics or explored his mythology, but this film, more than others, focuses on Kal-El as an undocumented alien in hiding, hopping from job to job, hoping that authorities will see him as someone here to help, not replace. I grew up in Kansas, General. About as American as it gets. Young Clark panics from his overwhelming senses, and Martha tells him to make the world smaller. Just, um... Focus on my voice. Composer Hans Zimmer in this moment simplifies it all down to the mere basic piano melody of this Superman theme, reflecting Clark tuning out the world's distractions to bring himself home to his core value of hope. And the editing syncs this song with the whale song that wakes up Clark in the water. Some theories suggested that those whales were sent by Aquaman. Snyder acknowledged it as a cool idea, but not necessarily one he intended. After saving Smallville school kids, Pete Ross and Lana Lang, Pete's mom casts him again as a religious figure. I'm sure what he thought he saw was- Was an act of God, Jonathan. This was providence. Lana saw it too and the Fordham boy. And she's referring to Whitney Fordham, one of the jocks who later bullies Clark, but he's based on Whitney Fordman, Lana Lang's Smallville boyfriend. Pa Kent suggests Clark might sometimes have to let people die to hide a secret, foreshadowing his own death. But Clark says, Can I just keep pretending I'm your son? You are my son. An exchange taken from the Superman Secret Origins comic. Clark first greets Lois Lane by lifting her out of the helicopter, catching her as he will again catch her in the future, and welcoming her to something near his home turf of the Kryptonian scout ship, as she will later do for him in the final scene, welcoming him to the Daily Planet. And I love how you can see all of that right here in this little greeting. She meets Dr. Emil Hamilton, who in the comics is a scientist from Star Labs, alongside future DCEU characters like Cyborg's father, Silas Stone, and it looks like in the Justice 
Justice League Snyder Cut, Ray Palmer, the Atom. Now this ancient Kryptonian scout ship has left one cryopod open, a hint by Snyder that there could be another Kryptonian out there somewhere, but rather than confirming it could be Supergirl Kara Zor-El, Snyder just left it as a general loose end that he might come back to later. One of the observation monitors shows the surface of Mars, which Snyder said was intended to be a nod to Dr. Manhattan from his previous film Watchmen, but he said that actually showing Manhattan would be too much. Too much dick. Perry White won't run Lois' story, so she leaks it to Woodburn, whose name is an amalgamation of Watergate reporters Woodward and Bernstein. Jor-El's projection recounts Krypton's history via shape-shifting engravings, which were based on real-world Greco-Roman sculptures, with those lost classic influences also inspiring Kryptonian social engineering. Every child was designed to fulfill a predetermined role in our society. As a worker, a warrior, leader so this was inspired by plato's republic which clark actually could be seen randomly reading later in a flashback see plato preached that the most just society sorted everyone into functions based on their compositions at birth a very rigid social structure that immigrants all over the world over the centuries have sought to break free from you're as much a child of earth now as you are of crypto you can embody the best of both worlds now the flight test is narrated by Jor-El, paraphrased from Grant Morrison's words in All-Star Superman. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. They will race behind you, they will stumble, they will fall, but in time, they will join you in the sun count. Clark tells Lois about his father's death via tornado, showing how this Superman and Zack Snyder's universe will sometimes lose people to forces of nature. Although he totally could have saved him, I mean, just like super fast. The fucking tornado, is anyone gonna really notice? Also, by the way, highway overpass is not safe to hide under during a tornado. Anyway, the first of many avoidable DCEU casualties that we will discuss in an upcoming big question. Clark returns to the Kent farm from a LexCorp truck. LexCorp actually shows up all over this movie, setting up Lex Luthor's entry to this universe in the next film. Wibbly. You gotta look carefully because these details could be hiding in plain sight. Like I bet you didn't know that I had a Ridge wallet in my hand because actually I didn't. It's on my head. Thanks for playing. Thanks to the Ridge for sponsoring this episode. The Ridge helps you carry what you need every day from their flagship Ridge wallet to their portable charging commuter backpack. They want to make the most out of what you're bringing with you. The Ridge wallet is made out of military grade materials like titanium or carbon fiber. It has a clean stylish design and we have learned it is chainsaw proof. Tested on our intern Craig. May he rest in peace. <laughs> this is their Forge Carbon Fiber Wallet. They have other colors, including some very flashy tiki designs. It's light, it's strong, it's like a piece of coal from a coal mine. They make it easy to buy with free shipping and free returns and lifetime guarantee. It's got 30,000 five-star reviews, so you know they're doing something right. They also have great backpacks and travel bags with RFID blocking pockets, optional device charging batteries. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash newrockstars. That's ridge.com slash newrockstars. And use the code newrockstars. Find the link in the video's description. Sullivan's Tractor Repair is a nod to Chloe Sullivan, originally from the Smallville series, later brought into the comics. Oh, wait, Allison Mack, goddammit, can we get one retro breakdown where the cast or crew isn't later revealed to be a criminal? Along with Whitney Fordham, the other bully is Ken Braverman. Kenny Braverman in the comics is a Smallville kid exposed to Kryptonian radiation, becomes a supervillain conduit. Adult Clark chats with Father Leone, a recurring confidant from the comics since 2004, and behind Clark is the not-at-all-subtle stained glass showing Jesus in Gethsemane, the moment Jesus decides whether to sacrifice himself to save humanity, as Clark is about to do here. General Swanwick is the one official not to back up when Superman breaks the cuffs and approaches the glass. That might be because Zack Snyder later revealed that he planned for this guy to be the DCEU's Martian Manhunter, a backstory we might see in the Snyder Cut, according to some hints from actor Harry Lennox. And the communication officer behind Hamilton in the shot is a cameo by Aaron Smolinski, who, as a kid, played the child version of Kal-El in the original Richard Donner Superman. And cameoed in two and three. Zod explains to Superman how they escape the Phantom Zone by retrofitting the Phantom Drive into a hyperdrive. And so the instrument of our damnation became our salvation. He also says that they only found Earth because Kal-El activated the distress beacon from this scout ship. You led us here, Kal. 
So ironically, the instrument of Cal's salvation became his damnation. Now this projected image of Superman sinking into the field of skulls is a bit dramatic. Not a very good idea if Zod wants Cal to join him. Snyder said that he wanted to reflect the worst possible fate for Superman being unable to stop the deaths of everyone around him. Superman fights Zod's commanders in Smallville. This action was shot with handheld rigs, shaky pans, quick zooms, a naturalistic documentary style so that they had to animate the fighting Kryptonians to the camera, even if that means they aren't cleanly in every frame. It actually looks kind of cool to see what it would look like from a ground-based TV news crew filming this. The only problem is this rule gets broken later when Superman fights Zod. Like, you can't have a TV news crew floating around them in the air. That might be part of the reason you might not emotionally attach to that later fight. Namek jumps on a jet and rips off the pilot's head, causing his blood to spray everywhere. Ah! Actually, if you listen very closely, you can hear this pilot's final words echoing over Smallville. <laughs> Now the Smallville storefronts are filled with Easter eggs. Otto's Barbershop is a nod to Otto Binder, creator of Supergirl, Brainiac, Crypto the Dog, and the Phantom Zone. Pap's Pizza is a nod to George Edward Pap, Superboy artist. Ezra's Mail Depot is a nod to Smallville Town founder in the comics, Ezra Small. And Toomey Waste Disposal is a nod to DC Comics writer Bob Toomey. Now, in Martha's childhood photo of Clark, his school is Weisinger Elementary, named after Superman editor Mort Weisinger, who for the comics developed the concept that a yellow sun enhances Superman's abilities. And notice how Clark's science fair project is a volcano. Interesting parallelism with the Kryptonian world engine machine, which the movie's designer deliberately made to function with the seismic effects of a volcano. The way volcanoes devastate the surrounding land, but refertilize the soil to allow new life to grow from the ashes. When one of the Metropolis cars lifts from the world engine, you can hear screams inside. <laughs> haunting reminder of the lives lost with each of these dead. And when Superman punches up through the world engine on the other side of the globe, there is a brief frame where the light and pressure makes Cavill's face look kind of like Christopher Reeve's face, though Snyder said that this was unintentional. It's just the way it looks. It's not, I mean, if, if it looks like that, that's the gods, not me. Yeah. Hmm, the gods, huh? The only god we pray to is Zack Snyder, so I'll take this as confirmed. Superman officially chooses his new home over the one he emigrated from. Krypton had its chance! <laughs> and Fiora Al knocks a dude out of the plane and he lets out a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> but Colonel Hardy kamikazes them with a callback to her earlier threat. A good death is its own reward. A good death is its own reward. Now, the world engine gravity has flattened a plane in the middle of the city, which is later rebuilt into Heroes Park in Batman v Superman and in Justice League. Superman fights Zod first here, and he fights him again in the same spot when Zod's corpse is resurrected as Doomsday in the next film. And in Justice League, the rest of the team fights resurrected Superman in this same spot. Superman's fight with Zod is filled with cool visual details that are kind of hard to spot through all these 9-11 reminders. So let's break them all down in a breaking Metropolis breakdown. So when Zod fires up his heat vision for the first time in that wrecked office on the desk to the left of Superman. If you look real closely, is a poster in the style of Keep Calm and Carry On, except this one says Keep Calm and Call Batman. Batman vs Superman shows how at this moment, Batman was just blocks away helping civilians survive this Kryptonian bar fight. As Zod slides the LexCorp fuel truck at Superman, in the bottom left corner is a bloodstained smiley Watchmen logo, another nod by Snyder to his past film. And then when they fly toward each other on the building facade, in the background below is a sign for Blaze Comics, an in-universe comics publisher that the character Booster Gold uses to promote himself. They fly up to the LexCorp building under construction, and Zod forces Superman into the Days Without Accident sign, which drops to zero. Ha! Superman punches Zod again and again through the air. Visuals from storyboard artist Jay Oliva, who cited anime series like Dragon Ball Z and Birdie the Mighty. But after that first hit, on the far right, the red sign at the top of the tower reads Star Labs, the company where Silas Stone turns his son Victor into Cyborg in the next movie. The air fight also zips him past WGBS News, which in the comics is run by Superman foe Morgan Edge. And there's a really cool visual when Zod swings Superman around by his cape. No capes. The frame 
pushes in on Zod's eye, which transitions into Superman's House of El sigil from his chest as it flies away. The father and son who would spell Zod's doom. They fly past the Utopia Casino, which in the comics is run by Tony Gallo, who smuggles in kryptonite into the city for Lex to use as a ring. And then up in orbit, Zod throws a satellite, which if you look closely at it, is owned by the Wayne Corporation. This is the same satellite debris that Bruce sees in the Batman vs Superman prologue when he glares up at the Man of Steel from the Wayne Tower rubble. Honestly, one of my favorite Batman moments. And next up in our DC week, we're gonna crunch the numbers to rank Batfleck with all the movie Batman and big question, be sure to check it out. But here, the debris rains past the old LexCorp tower and it tumbles the two brawlers down into the train station where Superman does this. See that shockwave after breaking Zod's neck? That's what broke all of our hearts. And Superman's heart. Superman had to kill Zod here because as Zod said, he was never gonna stop trying to kill as many innocent people as he could. Zod was never gonna give up. He represented the extremist side of Plato's Republic. He wanted an idealist utopia where society would be sorted, but that perfection was never meant to be. And you can see that in the crumbled Greek columns around them, reflecting the collapse of those ideals. And in destroying his homeland's old guard, Kal-El pays respects by kneeling before Zod. Superman wrecks Swanwick's surveillance drone and Captain Ferris accurately observes I just think he's kind of hot. Carol Ferris is, in the comics, the love interest of Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, and goes under the name Star Sapphire. Clark gets a job as a reporter for The Daily Planet, the Man of Steel assimilating as a Man of Earth. And Lois underscores this immigrant story with excellent wordplay in the final exchange. Welcome to the planet. Glad to be here, Lois. Our DC analysis will continue with a rewatch and breakdown of Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman Donna Justice. And we're going to look at the extended Ultimate Edition because that's really the only way to watch it in my view. Our live watch party will be Wednesday, August 19th, 5 p.m. Pacific, exclusive to our patrons on Discord. And you can join us at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Then our video breakdown of Batman vs Superman will come out on the channel next Friday. Follow me on Instagram at EA Voss, follow new rockstars, and subscribe for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching and always remember to tip. Yeah, asshole, don't forget your tip.